Hi BeatStars community, my name is Sam and I'm a music producer from the UK. I've teamed up with BeatStars to bring you a three-part video series on how you can produce drill beats like Pop Smoke. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a melody and chord progression in the style of a Pop Smoke drill type beat. If you are a producer, artist, or anybody interested in the modern music industry, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell so that you're the first to know whenever a new content like this comes out. If you want to check out my catalogue, you can go to beatstars.com forward slash audio by Samuel. Drill is a style of trap music that emerged around the early 2010s in the south side of Chicago. Chief Keef is credited as being a pioneer of the genre, as well as the producer Young Chop. By 2015, UK producers had formed a whole new sound from the past influences, and this gained a lot of traction over the next five years. This led on to influencing the creation of regional subgenres such as Australian drill and Irish drill and New York Drill, where the sound was picked up by artists such as Pop Smoke using beats by 808 Mellow and Axel. We will be using Logic as our main DAW today. Plus, I've only used stock Logic plugins and VSTs, so you don't need to invest in any third-party software in order to do the stuff that I'm going to show you today. Okay, let's dive into the project. Pro tip number one, optimize project settings. So I'm going to click on the Logic Pro X button and go to Preferences and Advanced Tools. It's really important that we have our advanced tools enabled, otherwise some of the features and some of the functions in Logic will be missing. When you've done this for the first time, you shouldn't have to do it again, but often Logic by default has all of these switched off, so we need to make sure that they're switched on. Go to your audio settings and check that you have a high buffer size. We're going to be using lots of plugins and VSTs, so we need to make sure that our project's running without any system overloads. Once that's done, I make sure that the pre-fader metering is switched on. This will let me know if uh, any of my instruments are clipping or peaking. The last thing that I'm going to do before I start composing, and it's a really important step, is to save the project. Drill beats tend to have a tempo of around 140 to 150 beats per minute. For a pop smoke drill type beat, I recommend using a tempo of 142 beat PM. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open a software instrument. And I'm gonna to choose to use the Mellotron. The Mellotron was an instrument invented in the 60s and it allows you to combine two sounds together. There are a few ways that you can input notes into Logic. The first is if you have a MIDI keyboard and you can play them in. The second is to use musical typing, which is keyboard shortcut Command and K, which will bring up the musical typing. And the third way is to right click the grid and create MIDI region and draw in the notes using the mouse. This is the method that I'm going to be using today. So I double click the green region and I'm going to press Y on the keyboard to remove the library from my screen. This will give me more space. And I'm going to compose in the key of C minor. For a drill type beat, particularly a pop smoke drill type beat, I recommend using a minor key to get that dark, sad, ominous, and melancholic sound. Make sure that my secondary mouse function is a pencil, and I'm going to hold down the command button to draw the notes in. So I'll start with a C. I'm going to play C and the fifth of C is a G. I'm going to copy them, paste that over and over three more times to make four bars. And I'll do this using the Command and R key. So I'll highlight both of the notes using Command and A. This will highlight both the notes and then Command and R to repeat. Then I'll put the cycle range on so that the region will loop over and over again whilst I work on it. I'm going to go back into the Mellotron to adjust the sounds. Now that I'm happy with the sound, I'm going to start moving the notes around to create a chord progression. You can zoom in and out of the piano roll by using the trackpad if you're on a laptop. Um, and you can also use the zoom in and zoom out functions in the top right here.
Many drill songs only use two, three, or maybe four chords, and we can keep this fairly simple as we're going to be layering it and building melodies over the top of it. I'm going to double this with some piano chords. So a new software instrument, and I'm going to choose an empty channel strip and find a piano in the search. If you don't have the library appear on your screen, you can use the button wire to bring it up. I'm going to go to piano and choose a Steinway grand piano. I'm going to use the option or alt button to drag and drop this region to duplicate it. I'm going to press Y again to remove the library so as I don't need that anymore. The next thing I'm going to do is add a melody note to bring some movement to the chord progression. And I'm just using notes from within the key of C minor. To hear it better, I'm going to turn down the Mellotron slightly. This leads me into pro tip number two. Roll the chords and use the MIDI transform features. So the idea behind rolling the chords is to imagine a piano player. Now sometimes they would play the notes fairly straight where they hit all the notes at exactly the same time, but sometimes they add expression and musicality by rolling the notes on their keyboard. So I'm going to do that using the mouse. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm just bringing them slightly off the grid as the higher the, the, the note goes and keeping the lower note fairly straight with the rhythm. Now I'm not being too perfect with this, I'm just, just trying to achieve the sound of, of, a, of a rolled chord. The next thing I'm going to do is use the MIDI transform. To use the MIDI transform, highlight all of the notes using the keyboard shortcut Command and A. This highlights all of the notes. Then go to Functions, MIDI transform. The MIDI transform functions that I use the most are Fixed Velocity, Random Velocity, Humanize, and Fixed Note Length. Fixed Velocity puts everything into the same velocity like it currently is now. Random Velocity makes each note a different velocity. Humanize does the same as Random Velocity, where it changes the velocity of each note, but it also shifts them slightly off the grid. And Fixed Note Length puts every single note at the same length, which is, use which is a useful editing feature for melody making. For now, I'm going to click on Humanize. All you need to do here is select Operate Only, and you may notice that some of the notes start to move and change color. You can click this again to enhance the effect, but sometimes it may be a bit too much. For example, these middle notes here are now slightly too loud, so I'm going to highlight them and then turn them down manually using the velocity fader. But overall, this has added a sense of movement and more expression, more musicality to my chords and my melody. Pro tip number three. Use sampling techniques and lo-fi mixing techniques to create a warm, old and dusty sound. Many of Pop Smoke's producers sampled a range of different records, including live instrumentation. 
So this is the kind of sound that we're going for. Seeing as the Mellotron already has a sample tape sound, I'm not going to do much with it just yet. And I'm going to focus on making the piano sound a little less bright and a, and a bit more old. First thing that I'm going to do is to go to the EQ and use a low cut or a high pass to cut out some of the bass frequencies. Let's solo it for now using the keyboard shortcut S. And I'm also using a low pass filter or a high cut to get rid of some of the brightness. One secret in Logic is that you can use the tape delay plugin to add some special tape saturation character to your sound. To do this I'm going to go into the tape delay plugin and turn down everything that makes it a delay. So I'm going to turn off the tempo sync and the delay time. Also turn down the feedback. I'm going to turn the wet all the way up and the dry all the way down so that we have the, the full sound going through this plugin. The special tape sound can be achieved using this character section here. So I'm going to pull down the clip threshold to add a little bit of grit, a little bit of warmth, a little bit of analog. Uh, emulation to the sound. I can choose the frequency range that I want to put this in. Kind of like it around here where it sits around 200 to 2200. And I can add a bit of width using the spread feature here. Remember you can change the tape head mode to get a different colour. The next thing that I can use is the modulation section. Now this emulates the sound of a tape that's been used over and over again and starting to wear out. So it will cause the piano to sort of have a, a, fl a flutter uh, and a wavy sound to it that goes in and out of tune. It's a really cool effect, so I'm trying not to use too much. So you can see with the Mellotron here that I've added an extra note up top. I blended a flute with a string section and have them both set to plus 12 with two on the tape speed, 35 on the tone and at minus eight decibels on the volume. So I followed the same, chord, uh, same two note harmonic progression, but this has like an upper part here. The piano has four chords that look like this. And I've also used a low cut to cut rid of all the bass sounds and a high cut or a low pass to get rid of the brightness of the piano to make it sound more old and more warm. Okay, so now it's time to bounce it down into an audio file so that I can do some sampling techniques on it. To do this, highlight both the regions and right click, go to bounce and join and bounce in place. I'm going to call it the sample and I want to make sure that normalize is switched off, 
Logic has it set to overload protection only by default, but uh, it's best to have this switched off. Okay. And there's my sample. And it should just sound exactly the same as uh, what I've been making. <laughs> To get the scissors tool, go to the secondary mouse function and go and choose scissors tool and then use the command button to chop the region up into pieces. If you make a mistake like I just did there, you can press command and Z to undo. If you want to do this quickly, you can press command and option or command and alt at the same time and click on the subdivision that you want and it will chop it up automatically for you. <laughs> So we can try and reverse these to see what it sounds like. So you can highlight these all together and then region and then reverse. Sometimes you might you may need to press this more tab here to see the reverse button. I'm going to click that. That's kind of cool. That's one way we could go around doing this. Um, but the way that I'm going to do it today is that I'm going to press command and Z to undo what I just did and I'm going to reverse the entire region before I start chopping it up. So back to where I was and I'm going to press reverse here. So it's reverse the entire region rather than each individual sample. You'll get different results uh, by, do it, by trying the different options. So that will sound like this. going to chop them up again using the command and option button on, on every bar. And then we can try moving these around into a different order to see uh, if we can come up with anything interesting. You may have noticed that there's some digital clicks and pops in there from where I've, where I've chopped it with the scissors. We can get rid of these digital clicks and pops by using the fade in and fade out over here on the screen. So I'm going to turn the fade in up and obviously you can see the more that I use, the bigger the fade, the longer it will take to sound in the, the longer the fade will be in the sample. So you can see this white section that's popped up here on each sample. I can still hear some of the clicks and pops, so I'm going to add a fade out as well. Now you may have noticed that Logic has automatically muted these regions, but if you did want to use these again, uh, which I may later in the composition, then you can go over to here where it says mute and unmute those. The keyboard shortcut for that is Ctrl and N, and these will mute and unmute the regions. This is useful for building sections, as one section you may want to keep reversed, and then the next section you can have the sample playing as normal. So now I've got my chord progression and melody, and it's almost finished here. And I've tried using instruments that you would find in a pop smoke type beat, such as strings and woodwind. The one thing that is missing though is a vocal chop or a vocal loop. Vocal loops and chops are used in several different ways in pop smoke type beats. The first is as part of the main loop sample itself, and the second is as like one shots uh, throughout the piece, like emphasizing beats on different bars. Okay, so I have my microphone set up ready to use, and I'm going to record in a vocal melody. Okay, so I've recorded a quick vocal loop now, and there's a bunch of things we can do to embed it as part of our chord progression. Firstly, I'm going to chop it up. I'm 
going to add some EQ to remove some of the low end rumble and remove some of the brightness. Some compression to, to balance out and level the vocal slightly. Next up, I'm going to add some pitch correction just to fix some of the wrong notes. It helps if you know your key so you can set that to the auto-tune and the auto-tune automatically tries to stick to those notes in the key. So I'm going to change this to C harmonic minor and then bring down the response times to the quickest. At this point, I also forgot to turn low latency mode off again. So some of the plugins aren't responding to what I'm doing. So record low latency mode off. The fast response time was actually too much and I was getting too much of that auto tune effect in there. So I'm going to roll this back up again. Last thing I'm going to do to this vocal is add a touch of reverb just to get it sitting in there to have its own space uh, and to add like a, a sort of a 3D effect to the sound. Okay, so that's the end of the first video. I really hope you learned something and found value in what I showed you today. If you did, remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and maybe drop a comment. Tell us about your method of making a pop smoke drill beat melody. Remember to catch part two of this video series where I'll show you how to sequence an 808 bass line with the glides and slides. I'll also be showing you how you can program a hard hitting and punchy drum pattern to go with the melody. I'll see you there.